Hello and welcome to this video on the biology required practical for food tests. I'm going to start by showing you the positive results for each test with some known solutions where it will definitely work. I'm going to start with glucose. I'm going to add a sample of glucose to my test tube and then I'm going to use Benedict's solution. This is a harmful solution so if you spill it on your skin you need to wash it off straight away and obviously goggles should be worn at all times. It's blue in colour and I'm going to add a few drops and you can see at the moment it is still blue. What I'm going to do now is put it into a water bath and leave it just to the side of the camera so you can hopefully during the rest of the video see the colour change to expect for a positive result for sugars. The next test I'm going to do is for protein. So I've got some albumin which is egg white and I'm going to put that in my test tube. And then I'm going to add some biuret solution. Again, this starts off as a blue colour, but this time the colour change we're looking for is quite different. I'm going to add about 2 mil, and you can see an immediate colour change to lilac or purple. That is the positive result for protein. If there is no protein, it will stay blue. The next test we're going to do is for fat. So I'm going to add a sample of oil and for this test I'm going to add some water as well. That's because we want to see some separation between our oil and our water. Sudan 3 is the reagent we're going to use. It's highly flammable so when you're doing your risk assessment make sure you mention that. Uh, you must keep it away from all sources of ignition. I'm going to add a few drops And then I'm going to place a bung in the top and give it a shake. And what we're hoping to see is the red Sudan 3 reacting and adhering to the droplets of oil, giving us a nice layer at the top. The final test is for starch. I'm going to add a sample of starch to my test tube and then a couple of drops of iodine. Iodine starts off a very brown colour and as soon as it comes into contact with starch it will change to blue-black. Those are the reagents you need and the positive results for each test. This shot will give you a close-up version showing you the positive result for each test. I'm going to take the sugar test out of the water bath. I just want to correct myself earlier. This tests for all reducing sugars, not just for glucose. You can see it's turned a nice brick red orange colour. Sometimes it will give you a positive result where it just turns green. It's still a colour change from blue, so that is still the positive result. Here is the test for protein, which has turned a lilac purple colour. And you may, on the top layer here, just be able to see some red flecks um, in our solution. They are where the Sudan 3 has attached the oil. Finally, we have our iodine solution, which is turned from the original brown to a very dark blue-black. Hello, and welcome to the um, actual technique required for the food tests. So Mr Moon has already showed us the positive results we're looking for with the food test. So what I'm going to do now is test some actual food. So we've got here some biscuit. I'm going to put some into my mortar and I'm going to grind it up with the pestle. So give it a good grinding, really, really crush up the biscuit because you want to make a nice fine powder. There we go. There we are. Just as though you're making a buttery biscuit base. So we've got a nice grind up powder there and I'm going to add this Get my dirt and remote into a beaker. Now you can either use a 100ml beaker or a 250ml beaker for this, it doesn't really matter. But to this I'm going to add some distilled water. So this distilled water is going to hopefully have any protein, glucose or reducing sugars, um, any starch dissolved into it which the biscuit contains. So good squeeze. There we go. And now I'm going to give it a really, really good mix. 
because we want to help that dissolving along. So once you've given it a good mix, first thing we're going to do is we're going to test for fats. So to do this, we're not going to filter out the solution from the biscuit yet. We're going to take some of the solute straight away on the top and add it to our test tube. So then to this, we are going to add about three drops of the Sudan 3. There we go. Three. Ended up more than a bit like squeezes, but oh well. And then we're going to add our bung to the top and give it a good shake. So I'm just going to leave that to the side there, and hopefully any fat molecules we have present in the biscuit are going to separate out and attach to the Sudan 3, and we will get to see some little flecks of red at the top. So the next stage is to filter our biscuit and water mix. So I've got some filter paper on the top of my funnel and I'm just going to pour in the biscuit, obviously into the conical flask, and we're going to now let the solute go through because this is what we're going to be using for the rest of the test. So our solute has successfully separated out from our biscuits. As you can see in there, we've got lots of biscuit mush. So I'm just going to remove our funnel and put it over there. So in here we have our solute, which we hopefully have dissolved in it our starch, our reducing sugars and our protein. So I'm going to pop on the... Sorry, I need a bit. I'm going to pop this into our test tubes. Nice amount of each. It's a lovely colour. And then into this I'm going to test for the reducing sugars first. So I'm going to add some of the Benedict solution. Ten drops, the instructions say. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A little swirl and into my here's one I made earlier, water bath. And we just leave that there to see what happens. So I'm going to do the protein test next. So the instructions say to use 10 centimetre cubed. So each of the pipettes are marked out. So that's two centimetre cubed. Squeeze. And as you can see there, we've had no colour change to the lilac as we had before when Mr Moon done it. So it doesn't look like we've got any protein present in the biscuit. So then our final test is for the starch. So I'm going to add a few drops of the iodine solution. And it seems that it hasn't really worked. So this could be because not enough starch has dissolved into the solution or um, there isn't a high enough of concentration for us to see a significant colour change. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some on the biscuit just to prove that actually the biscuit does have some starch in it. So, if you have a look at the biscuit there, it's got a lovely black colour, the blacky blue colour of the iodine. So we do know that there is starch present within the biscuit, it's just unfortunately it hasn't worked in the solute. So, if we go back to our test for reducing sugars, we've got, as Mr Moon said, it doesn't have to go the brick red. This one has gone a lovely green colour as it's different to the blue. So, from the test you can see that we have definitely got some reducing sugars present in our biscuit. Absolutely no protein. The test is negative for starch, however when we tested the biscuit itself it is actually positive. And then in the fats test there are some teeny weeny little red flecks if you look very very closely. On the close up you can see here our nice reducing sugars has gone a lovely greeny colour. Absolutely no change at all in the um, protein test. Uh, not really any change, however, it does look like it might be slightly darker than the um, yellowy brown solution of the iodine. But as you can clearly see on the biscuit, we've got a lovely dark bluey black colour. And then hopefully you can see the tiny red specks at the top of the solution and the Sudan 3 in it for the test for. That's